Good morning, Bowie's Creek. Welcome back. Uh, we are continuing talking to our church members that are being affected by the COVID-19 shutdown and uh, self-isolation. Uh, uh, it's been a tough few weeks. Uh, it's only the beginning. We're going to be in this for a while. So we wanted to just talk with some of our church members that are being affected by this in different ways. Today we have with us Paula Smith. Paula uh, and her husband Edgar are living here and Paula has her parents in Georgia. And so that creates an, uh, a new challenge, a different challenge. Um, I'm kind of going through that with my parents a little bit, being down in Greensboro. But uh, Paula, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, it's hard to believe that we're at the beginning of this because I'm already getting a little bit stir crazy. But um, things are going well. Good. Well, what challenges do you face, particularly being here, having to come and take care of everything you're having to take care of, but also knowing that your parents are in Georgia, and that's a long ways away. So what, what challenges have you experienced just early on in this uh, process? Um, my parents live in middle Georgia, and my mother has recently had some health issues, which is causing her to go down a little bit. Um, and Edgar and I had decided that we were going to make more frequent trips to Georgia to make sure everything was okay with mom and dad. You kind of want to lay eyes on your parents and, and make sure they're still doing as well as they say they're doing over the phone. So we had planned some, some trips and um, right now those trips are off because we don't need to, we don't need to take the virus home to mom and dad. Um, so it's challenging to um, keep up with what they're doing, how they're doing. Um, that generation is very independent. So my dad has the, uh, the opinion that as long as he can get out and do it, he's going to do it. And uh, uh, trying to encourage them to, to not take chances. Uh, Mother and I had a conversation the other day, should she cancel her hair appointment and I said yes you should cancel your hair appointment so those things over the over the phone are kind of challenging yeah um well speaking of phone how are you staying connected like what does that look like on a daily or weekly basis with your parents um I call my mother and daddy every day now mm -hmm. um I was keeping up with them every other day but now I feel like they need the connection they are looking for uh, little stories to keep them uplifted because they are trying to, to stay home. They're in, they're in an apartment, um, so there are people around them, but, but they are somewhat isolated. Um, but we talk every day, and we text. My parents text, and uh, um, we've done some FaceTime. They're able to do that. And the other, their great-grandchildren have FaceTime which is good because they've got connection that way. So did you guys do that before? Is that something new? Or With the FaceTime? Yeah. Um, the FaceTime is a little new, but my parents, um, they're pretty savvy mm -hmm. with their iPad and their iPhone, so um, that's not totally new. Awesome. Just maybe more frequent. <laughs> good <deal. laughs> Well, let me ask you this. I, uh, one of the things that I, I think are, is encouraging uh, I've seen at least it seems to be encouraging to folks is that starting to think post self isolation. So have you guys started talking about like how this is going to look once it's over to kind of give hope that it's coming? Um, we have not talked about when it's over with mom and dad. Um, my mother and dad are positive people mm -hmm. anyway. And so um, they are perhaps as encouraging to me as I am to them, if that, if that makes sense. They, they don't, I think my daddy made a comment recently that they, you know, when you get to be 88 and 89, you've gone through some things mm -hmm. and you've seen some things. And so they don't dwell on the difficulties because they've been through difficulties in their That's lives. Right. Well, what are some bright spots, perhaps, that have come out of this? Um, my brother and my sister and I are communicating. <laughs> I mean, we do that, but we're doing it more regularly, seeing how each one of us can, can support the other and what's going on with Mother and Dad. I do have a brother in Little Georgia, and he's keeping me posted on 
what he's seeing. Um, he's dad. Yesterday, dad allowed my brother to go get groceries for him, mm -hmm. so that that was good because that was the first time he had allowed somebody else to do it for him. Awesome. So. That's good. Well, what are some ways we can pray for you and your parents during this time? I just think we need. Um, for me personally, just praying that uh, um, that I make the right decisions um, for my family here and for my parents in Georgia. Um, I pray that I would ask for prayer that I don't get um, anxious, that I remember who I'm trusting in, um, and uh, you know there are a lot of other people who would. I think about this often. I'm blessed at this stage in my life to still have my parents. So I, I, I am grateful for that. And I think about people who don't even have that opportunity. So um, awesome. just pray, that, pray for everybody who has parents in that situation. Awesome. Well, we'll continue to pray. And uh, I just want to encourage you to be checking on one another. Um, this is a difficult time for so many people, and it affects people in so many different ways. Uh, it seems like every day I think of another way it's affecting different people. So thank you for joining us. Good morning, Blues Creek. We'll see you next week.